All right, so I just did the math and figured out that for the two by eight inch piece uh, pieces that I need for the top and bottom plates, for the thinner piece of wood, it would weigh 14 and a half grams roughly, and for the thicker piece, it weigh about 19 grams. So I've decided that I'm going to use the thicker piece for the bottom plate, and then I use this thinner one for the top plate, um, just because I want the bottom plate to be a little sturdier to withstand any crashes, because I really don't want it cracking or anything. All right, this one, this is 300 millimeters long. Uh, this is gonna be the long arm that goes all the way across. It's gonna be one of these, and then each of these are gonna be have to be cut in half, and that's what these are gonna be for. These are both 13.7, or 137.5 millimeters. And I didn't put them next to each other because when you cut them, it might not be exactly right. But then this one is gonna be the bottom plate because it's a little thicker. It's eight inches by 50 millimeters. And this is going to be the top plate, and it's the thinner one, and it's also 8 inches by 50 millimeters. And then this long strip is going to be cut into four sections, and those will be the doublers for where the uh, standoff sc screws go through it. So like right, like right there, that's what that's going to be for. So now let's get cutting. pieces cut out so let's start with the bottom plate and this is a little bit thicker this is 3 16 inch base wood and it's 50 millimeters by 8 inches so that's going to be the bottom and then we've got the arm so this is one long arm it's 300 millimeters by 5 or 50 millimeters so then that's going to go across like that basically and then these we have four of these and these are going to be the doublers for the motors so they're going to be on the bottom so we'll have one under each side and then we'll have one on each side for the other arms and then we've got two of these they're each 137 and a half millimeters roughly I don't think it's exactly that but so that's gonna they're gonna go here and then here's the other one roughly like that and then we've got these are um, the doublers for where the standoffs will go so we'll have two on the bottom plate and then these two will go on the top plate so that, that'll be like that and then we'll have the standoffs two on each end with the one in the middle for the camera and then the top plate will be on top like that basically so you get the basic idea of what it's going to look like uh, so I'm going to glue down these to the bottom plate and then I'm going to put the power distribution board on top of these arms and bolt them down through the arms and through the bottom plate. So let's move on to the next step. So I've just got it marked out where the motors are going to go. And these motors that I'm using, they're aluminum motors and they have like a bearing that uh, sticks out at the bottom of it. So I have to drill a pretty good sized hole in the middle of this to make room for that bearing because it actually does spin along with the motor. So that's why this, these are for, just to find the center of this one inch block. And that's another reason that I'm going to use a doubler on the bottom, because this, this piece could get kind of thin, and in a crash, uh, I don't want it to break, so that's just for extra strength. So I got the holes cut out in all of them. So you can see on these motors that I'm using, there's that little piece on the bottom that when it spins, that little piece spins too. I don't know why they designed it like that, but it's the way they have it so that it locks the motor shaft to the, the stator, I guess. But So that's going to go through there. 
and then we're gonna have the doublers on the bottom and then we'll screw it through both of them just like I had it on the old quad similar same idea so I just clamped down the motor doubler pieces onto the arms and glued them together with wood glue and I'm just gonna wait for that to dry Okay, so I went ahead and glued down the doublers for uh, the top and bottom plates. And then I also, on the top plate, the whole top of it, I put some wood glue on it and then I just kind of painted it around um, to try and reinforce it. That's what I did on my last quad here. I just did it on the edges. So if I crash it, hopefully it, it won't crack the wood. And I did the same thing just around the doublers on the bottom plate. And this is actually going to be the bottom of it, so it's going to sit like this. Um, so I'll let that dry. And then I also painted a little bit of wood glue on the top where the motors are going to go. Because I noticed after taking the motors off of this old one, it kind of dented it down a little bit. It's probably not a big deal, but I figure maybe just a little bit of extra strength. Okay, so what I've done here is I've marked out on the bottom plate uh, a square and then I drew diagonal lines to get uh, perfect 40 or 90 degree angles. Um, so then I marked out for the longer piece, I guess this would be the longer piece, I have two holes that are half inch from the middle and then I drilled the same thing here. And then for the um, shorter arms, they're a half inch from where they were going to hook up with the uh, longer arm which is right there so basically those holes will line up like that and then these holes will line up there and then I'll bolt it down and that should get it lined up and before I bolt it down all the way I'm going to put some glue under there to glue it down so it should be lined up perfectly okay the arms are glued down to the bo bottom plate and I've got it clamped down and I've got four bolts in also holding it down and I measured all of the angles or the dimensions here and they're all pretty much exactly the same so that's good it's lined up pretty well so once that dries we will take the bolts back out to make room for the PDB which will go on top of that and then we can get the uh, standoffs and we can get the top plate bolted on Alright, so the glue is all dried and I took the bolts back out. A couple of the washers got stuck on there from the glue, but I'll get those out later. Um, and then I, I drilled the holes for the standoff screws and then I got the standoffs in there. You can see I've got a washer on each side because I had a crash once and it kind of bent the standoff down into the wood because this wood's kind of soft. But it, it's, pretty st it's pretty solid. And uh, check this out only 102 grams for the whole frame so I think that's pretty good alright so I just drilled the holes for where the motor screws will mount on the arms uh, these these Lumineer motors they have four screw holes or bolt holes and the longer ones uh, is three quarters of an inch across so that's that's the one the two that I went with because I only use two screws because I don't want this to be too weak and I used two screws on my last quad and it worked fine. Never had them come out or anything. So uh, that lines up pretty good. So I guess the next thing to do is we're going to paint this. I'm going to paint it black I think just like the other one. It looked pretty good. And then we can start putting all the electronics back on it. This is the paint I'm going to be using. 
It's a Rust-Oleum black paint. So it should look pretty good when we're all done with that. Alright, so the paint's all dry. And I went through and uh, re-drilled all the holes because the paint kind of covered up some of the holes. But I think it turned out pretty good. This paint's kind of got a glossy finish. So I think it looks pretty cool. So now we can start putting the electronics on. I gotta wait for the PDB to get here in the mail. And then I can put that on right in the middle. <laughs> 